Okay, so welcome back to my channel, guys. I think it's almost around 10 to 15 days left for the Bitsat second attempt. And this video is completely going to be for everyone who is, you know, trying to ace their preparation and everyone who is trying to know like what to do, what are the things that you can do in the last 10 days? How can you use your last 10 days to the fullest? And in this video, I will not only mention the important chapters because a lot of previous videos, a lot of the students have asked me like what important chapters can we study so that, you know, you can focus completely on them. You can do the other chapters also by doing the full length tests and everything, but you can focus on these important chapters as a priority, right? So I will also be talking about these important chapters from each physics, chemistry and maths. And then I'll also be sharing some last minute strategies, some things you can do in the paper itself, and you can practice doing them in the mock itself and see how that works for you. And if it's working for you, you can utilize these same strategies in the paper. Don't use these strategies in the paper without testing them on the box, because there are some strategies that have worked for me that might not work for you. So given this context, I think let's get started. <music> So let's come to the important chapters for physics first, and then we'll go to chemistry and maths. So for physics, we have mechanics where you have like rotational mechanics, you have SHM. All of these chapters are pretty, like it takes you some time to do these questions, but you have a lot of weightage coming from here, right? Just like mechanics, you also have electricity where you have all the circuit type of questions. You will have, you know, capacitors and all of that. Capacitors was a, you know, a section which I skipped. And I remember in my bit side, I had got two questions in that. And I could not do it, but I think there was one more question which was very direct and it was directly formula based. So I remember using the formulas which I had just by hearted and I didn't even know what to use where. So I put, I took one, one option. Like if there was 50, 60 and 70, I took permutations and combinations of 50, 60, 70. And I was like, I just put it anywhere in the options. And then one of the options matched and I ticked it and that answer was luckily correct. So this is the benefit of using all the formulas and everything, which I'll discuss in the strategies also below. So yeah, do watch this video till the end to get every part of it, right? Just like electricity and mechanics, you will also have magnetism. You will also have kinematics. Kin what, what do I mean by kinematics is like work power, energy, units and dimensions. Kinematics is a chapter where you will get straight formula based questions, where it's units and dimensions. If you know the, if you know how to calculate the unit and everything, then that becomes like a straightforward three marks for you. Like you don't even have to base like, 20 30 seconds on it it's like a 10 second thing if you know it there and there you know about it okay and to summarize the physics part of uh, what you also can focus on is like modern physics and thermodynamics modern physics and thermodynamics if you do it in physics you have a high chance that you can also do it in chemistry because if you do modern physics in chemistry you will be able to do atomic structure and if you do thermodynamics in physics you'll obviously be able to do thermodynamics in chemistry it is like it's it's very confusing because chemistry ka jo structure hai of getting thermo questions there is a different way of solving it and physics ka there's a different way of solving it so always stick to one method and do both physics and chemistry questions in that same method that will help you more as opposed to using the chemistry method and then using the physics method for physics questions like that will not help you so because you have done modern physics and thermodynamics usse zyada questions nahi aayenge but jo bhi questions aayenge you will not only be able to do it from physics side but you will also be able to do it from the chemistry side so here you save a lot of time right coming to the chemistry part of it the main core chemistry part of it where you have organic chemistry organic chemistry may don't go into mechanisms like don't understand why this is happening what is happening don't understand that rather just know the final product. Ki ek aldehyde group aega, ek alcohol group aega, ek cyanide group aega, ya just like that. Okay, don't don't try to understand why, what happens, and everything because bitsat ke questions are different from JE ke questions. In the JE questions, you need to know the mechanism because sometimes you get exceptions. Ki ek cyanide aa sakta hai, but because of this one reagent, there is an exception that happens, and instead of a cyanide, you will get some aldehyde group or something like that. That will never happen in bitsat. Bitsat questions are straightforward. Okay, don't use your head too much to think about ki exception hoga to and all of that don't do all of that okay so these are straight up reactions understand the reactants understand the reagents and then you directly know the product so even in organic chemistry also you will not have that many questions you'll have seven eight questions obviously that is huge only but the major part of the portion will be focused on inorganic chemistry inorganic chemistry is the region that you want to like fully focus your time on because these are direct theory questions if you know the answers of these questions then you can directly take them and move forward it will take you five seconds to do each question 
this gives you a lot of time to do the other questions. So do inorganic chemistry heavily, do NCRT, do S block, do P block, all of these, like understand the periodic table properly because there are a lot of questions will come up, which will come on that also. Ki iske aur iske beech mein kaun sa aata hai and stuff like that. Right. And uh, lastly, to top it all off, I think you can do questions from chemical bonding and equilibrium where you have ionic equilibrium and all of that. I think these are questions which will be very straightforward. And you also have a lot of questions from the other chapters, which you even like if you've done those chapters, well and good. If you've not done those chapters, like don't focus on them because one se ek ya do question denge max. Okay, so rather focus on all these chapters, which I'm telling you. So yeah, physics chemistry done. Now coming to maths. Maths ke liye pehle to full calculus. Calculus pura in and out aana chahiye. Okay, focus on every chapter of calculus. What I mean by calculus is limits. There is differential calculus, differential equations and all of that. There is integral calculus, which is integration and you know, all of that part. And another major chunk of maths comes in coordinate geometry. A lot of questions come from circles, lines, all of these, if you can do there is also vectors that come in, which will help you with your coordinate geometry only. These are all connected chapters. If you do one chapter, second chapter becomes very easy for you. That is why I have mentioned all these chapters in a bucket for all of you guys, right? So I think maths is pretty, like it's a pretty vast portion that I've given you for maths. But I think if you just focus on this, it should be very easy to crack. So yeah, I think these were the important chapters that we discussed. So now moving on to the strategies, like what strategies can you use? What things you can do in the paper itself? Like, and I would really request you guys to not directly do this in the paper. Try this first in the mock test. See how comfortable you are with each strategy. See what strategies work for you because all these strategies are not used. Okay. I've only used some of these strategies. Okay. So whatever works for you do that. I have tried and tested all of these. Some have worked, some have worked for me. Some have not worked for me. So whatever works for you do that. My biggest strategy that has given me the best out of everything was that we had computerized tests, right? And even you guys have computerized, computerized tests, but you don't have the option. As far as I've interacted with students, I've come to know that you don't have the option of flagging the question. So even though I had the option of flagging the question, what I used to do is I used to take a se separate page, a separate, I mean, the rough pages they give, I used to take a separate page leta tha main, and last I used to write over there, unsure questions and lengthy questions. Okay, so unsure questions are the questions if I'll be able to do or not do or whatever. Okay. And the lengthy questions are the questions where I can sort of like tell myself that these are questions that I can sure short do, but these are questions which are like solvable, but will take some time. So that is why I'm keeping them in the lengthy question. When you write these lengthy questions, you, you can always do them at the last of the paper, because in the last few minutes, you want to make sure that you do as many questions as possible. And these are the lengthy questions that you want to keep at the last so that in the start, you want to like finish all the easy questions and all the formula based questions, all the direct questions, theory questions. And this is how you want to categorize your paper. So starting upper may you can put unsure questions, unsure questions may what you can do is you can write options. Like agar, if you have deleted the options, let's say a or B you know for sure ki nahi ho sakta hai. they have given a question like which of these are true. Okay. And you have to only take one option. You know that A and B are false. C and D may say ek answer say ho sakta hai. So then you write over the question number you put say question number is 23. You put over there ki C comma D. So when you are putting a tukka na at the end of it, you will come to know C or D may say tukka maanna meko. Not A, B, C, D. You know that increases your probability of getting the answer correct. Okay. Secondly, the strategy that you can use is adding values. Okay. I've spoken about this heavily in my previous uh, videos. He, there are a lot of questions you get with big equations, X square, Y plus Z square, X plus Y, Z square and stuff like that equal to some, something you have to find out and everything. And the options are given to you. Options are given to you A, B, C, D. You have to check which one is suited for that. Okay. So in this case, you don't want to solve that whole question. You can directly put X is equal to one, Y is equal to two, Z is equal to three. Rather than solving a whole one pager, you can just put these values and check in the options below ki konsa value agar dala to it's giving the same value as the above equation and that will be your answer. So these are sure short like methods which I have used, which have worked for me. The third strategy is if you have been following my videos, you might have noticed that I have been always stressing on the formula book and the formula book is something that has always helped me and it is something that I have maintained as a Bible. So you always have to revisit this formula book to make sure that whatever weak chapters that you have not done very strongly or you have not put a lot of focus on these chapters, you want to you know, at least make sure that your formula book that you are following, you want to make sure that these formulas, at least I know, and I know how to use them. That is more important, right? The fourth option is the deleting options while I trick. 
where if you know there are there is a limit like 300 ke upar nahi ho sakta so you will cross out all the options which are above 300 same way in chemistry if you know that you know if you know that it's not an aldehyde group or not an alcohol group then you can directly delete the options which have the aldehyde and alcohol group same way you can use this method i used to use this method heavily in units and dimensions agar you know ki this unit is not going to be there like r is not going to be there as a unit h o u r r okay it's not going to be there then you can remove the options which have r in it or which have a time or second in it okay you can directly leave those options okay this helps you in deleting the options always understand the fundamentals very clearly when once you understand the fundamentals clearly you sometimes don't even need to solve the questions you can just delete the options and get the answer okay next simple strategy is do the easy questions first and then the tough ones and this is a strategy which i had told you write down on the paper and even if you are unsure like if you want you can make it into three sections also you can put like a solvable tough solvable but lengthy tough and tricky or and the unsure ones okay so you can make three sections and accordingly you can categorize into all those three okay and this is the final strategy okay this is this is a luck based strategy completely and this is something that used to work for me i don't know if you it works for you guys and that is ki now say suppose i have answered 1 2 3 4 question and fifth one i have skipped then i answered 6 7 8 9 okay and if i have seen over there in the 1 2 3 4 ki a b c d ke options hai and out of them only a b and d have marked and niche bhi I have marked C only once. I have marked A, B, and D mostly. Then I'll take a guess on the fifth question. Okay, it will mostly be C, or it will mostly be B if B is not marked much. So whatever is not marked is what I used to use in the questions, which are filler questions. What I mean by filler questions is where you answered four questions up, you answered four questions down, and you missed one question in the middle. So that's a filler question. That is what that's just a term that I'm using right now. And over there, if A and D are heavily marked, then B or C may say answer also. These these are sure shot luck. based things and you can't predict them but it has worked for me and yeah i i hope it works for you guys if you guys are doing this strategy and ha i think that is about it i don't want to take too much of your time because you guys have to prepare also and don't binge watch don't binge watch youtubers just watch one video once you've understood the strategies close this video go to your paper and solve and before you close this video subscribe <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah do subscribe do like comment and share because my next video is going to be about my journey and how i cracked bitsat so in case you guys are losing hope in case you guys are worried about whether you guys can do it or not i'll share my journey and you'll come to know where i came from like i was not a scholar i was not a top scoring top top scoring student i was just an average school student and i still got in so yeah if you want to know all the updates all the insider updates you can subscribe to the channel you can like comment share whatever whatever you felt like you can always put it over there and a lot of the students are using my strategies and it's working out for them so i really hope it continues working out for you guys thank you so much